Hello, my name is Marissa Shu, and I'm a commercial vegetable production educator with Michigan State University Extension. Today, we're going to talk about how to check your corn earworm traps and how to use the information you gather there to make spray decisions to protect your sweet corn. Let's first take a look at how to identify your catch. Corn earworm moths are usually between one and a quarter inches and one and three quarter inches in size, and colors range from yellow to tan to brown. A good thing to look for is the dark spot in the center of the wings. If the moths have been in the trap for a while, they can be pretty beaten up. Here, the size and coloration might be all you have to go off of. Even on these damaged moths, you can still see they are larger than these other moths, which are not corn earworms. The dark spot on the forewings may also still be visible on damaged moths. Traps should be checked at least twice a week. The more often you check your trap, the less likely you are to miss a large flight of moths that require us action. So for example, if we waited a whole week to check this trap, we won't know if this flight of moths occurred seven days ago or more recently. To check a Heliothus trap, you can replace the top with a spare, put it into a Ziploc, and stick it in the freezer for a few hours to kill the moths and count them later. You can also turn the bottom inside out and try to shake the contents into a Ziploc. To check a wire heart stack trap, first count the moths along the top before opening it as they may fly away. Then count and remove the moths in the bottom. Next, record the number of moths you captured in the date. You can do this in a notepad or use a phone note-taking app or spreadsheet to record the data. It is helpful to record when you change the lure also so you always know it's fresh. Now that you have the data, what do you do with it? This data can be used to decide if insecticide applications are worthwhile and help you decide when it's most important to treat your corn. Because these two traps are not equally efficient at trapping moss, it is important that we don't use the same thresholds for each. Thresholds have been developed and validated by research for wire heart sack traps. Different thresholds are used depending on whether neighboring field corn is silking or not. When field corn is not silking, any trap catch justifies treatment. When neighboring field corn is silking, a trap catch of 10 moths per night or more would justify treatment. You can also adjust treatment intervals up and down based on trap catch. If captures are 5 per night or less, a 5-day spray interval should be sufficient. If trap catches approach 50 to 100 per night, a 2-3 to three day treatment interval would be more appropriate. Let's talk briefly about spray intervals. First, it is important to note that silks can grow rapidly. This means new, unprotected silks emerge over time. This is especially true in hot weather. Retreatment protects these and is especially important when moths are laying large numbers of eggs. Tightening intervals during hot weather and high moth catches helps protect corn as it grows. For Heliothus traps, Ohio State University Extension has published thresholds based on nightly trap catch and temperature. A link to this resource is available on the MSU Sweet Corn webpage. Research at Purdue University has shown that utilizing these thresholds can help you reduce unnecessary insecticide applications, so a little bit of time checking a trap can help save you money and avoid wormy corn. Happy trapping!